the statements as accurately representing Johan Tarkulowski's evidence before the Commission. The general principles of law do not dictate the exclusion of out-of-court statements. The Appeals Chamber also finds that the Trial Chamber properly weighed the statements in light of other evidence. Accordingly, the sixth ground of appeal is dismissed. In his seventh ground of appeal, Mr. Takulowski asserts that the trial chamber erred in sentencing him to 12 years imprisonment. In particular, he submits that the trial chamber failed to consider as a mitigating circumstance the fact that he was carrying out orders of those senior to him. He further maintains that the trial chamber failed to consider that the firearm later granted amnesty to those involved in both sides of the conflict. The appeals chamber considers that the trial chamber did take into account that Johan Tarkulowski was carrying out orders of unknown persons when assessing the gravity of the offenses. Moreover, the relevant legislation of the firearm contains a provision that those who committed criminal acts falling within the jurisdiction of the tribunal are excluded from the grant of amnesty. <coughs> Moreover, the trial chamber was not bound by the firearm sentencing practices. The seventh ground of appeal is dismissed. I turn now to the prosecution's appeal against the acquittal of Mr. Boskowski. The prosecution submits that the trial chamber committed an error of law when it incorrectly required under Article 73 of the statute that a superior need only provide a report to the competent authorities, which was likely to trigger an investigation into the alleged criminal conduct. The appeals chamber is satisfied, however, that the trial chamber correctly held that a superior may, under specific circumstances, discharge his obligations to punish an offending subordinate by reporting to the competent authorities, provided that this report is likely to trigger an investigation or initiate disciplinary or criminal proceedings. In the alternative, the prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred in fact in finding that Mr. Boskowski had taken the necessary and reasonable measures to punish his offending subordinates. In particular, the prosecution submits that reports provided by the Ministry of Interior to the competent judicial authorities were incapable of triggering a criminal investigation into the events in Truboten. The appeals chamber observes that the trial chamber was aware that the notifications made by the Ministry of Interior to the judicial authorities were not fully adequate. The trial chamber also recognized that no normal police investigations were carried out with respect to the relevant events. <clears throat> However, the trial chamber held that the notifications ought in the ordinary course to have led the judicial authorities to conduct a proper investigation. In reaching this conclusion, the <coughs> trial chamber particularly noted that the notifications brought the deaths of ethnic Albanians to the attention of the competent authorities, and while suggesting one cause, left the cause of death open. Furthermore, the evidence indicates that the notifications were made on the 12th and 14th August 2001, and that an investigation team was immediately set up by the competent 
judicial authorities and attempted to conduct an on-site investigation in Juboten. The evidence also shows that Mr. Baskowski was informed of these notifications and the investigation attempt. The trial chamber found that the serious failure to adequately investigate on the basis of the police reports to the judicial authorities was not attributable to Mr. Boskowski as the judicial authorities were not under his ministerial authority. The trial chamber also held that there was no basis for concluding that he tried to interfere impermissibly in the investigations or that he was aware of the failure of the police to perform their normal functions. The prosecution has not shown that these findings were erroneous. The appeals chamber holds that the trial chamber did not err when it found that the notifications ought in the ordinary course to have led the judicial authorities to conduct a proper investigation in the events in Juboten. Based on this finding, the trial chamber held that it was not shown that Mr. Baskowski failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures. In the circumstances of this case, it was open to a reasonable trier of fact to acquit Mr. Boskowski of failure to punish responsibility on the basis of the information given to the judicial authorities. The trial chamber did not commit a factual error when it arrived at this conclusion. As a result, the prosecution's appeal is dismissed in its entirety. I will now read out the disposition of the appeal judgment. Mr. Boskowski and Mr. Takoloski, will you please rise? For the foregoing reasons, the appeals chamber, pursuant to Article 25 of the statute, and Rules 117 and 118 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, and noting the respective written submissions of the parties and the arguments they presented at the hearing on the 29th of October, 2009, sitting in open session, dismisses Johan Takoloski's appeal in its entirety dismisses the prosecution's appeal in its entirety, affirms the acquittal of Jube Boskowski and the sentence imposed by the trial chamber against Johan Takoloski, subject to credit being given under Rule 101C of the rules for the period Johan Takoloski has already spent in detention and orders in accordance with Rule 103C and Rule 107 of the rules that Johan Takoloski is to remain in the custody of the tribunal pending the finalization of arrangements for his transfer to the state in which his sentence will be served. Judge Lou appends a separate opinion. Mr. Boskowski and Mr. Takoloski, you may now be seated. Um, the registrar will deliver copies of the judgment to the parties. is adjourned.